Hi, my name's Kurt Joyner, and today we're gonna talk about detoxing our money. Detoxing our money. Now, what's the definition of detox? It's to rid of poison or the effects of poison. And we're gonna talk about four ways that we can detox uh, from the, the effects of poison in the area of our finances, and at the same time practice healthy financial stewardship. And I'll give a brief testimony before I get into this, because you, you and I all know that, that God will turn our test into our testimony. And I'm gonna be very transparent uh, with you in the sense that I failed miserably in many of these areas that we're gonna talk about for years. And our finances were poisoned or cursed because of that. Um, but when I repented, when I turned, and I followed God's principles for money, that's when everything changed. So this is so near and dear to my heart, and I pray today that, that you will take these four keys and implement them in your life. Heavenly Father, Lord, just open the hearts to hear. Lord, I just pray that uh, we would be faithful stewards because you've written us a book that uh, is entitled The Bible, that's a love letter that allows us to live the life you want us to live, Lord. Thank you for today. Uh, be with us and open hearts today. Speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So number one, number one, get out of debt. Yes. We need to get out of debt and we need to stay out of debt. We need to, we need to get, the goal is to be debt free. No car payments, no house payments, no credit cards, no student loans. We owe nothing to anyone. In fact, debt, the definition of debt is something owed or bound to pay, it's an obligation. And even the word obligation feels a little stressful. Uh, Romans 13, eight says this, owe nothing to anyone except for your obligation to love one another. If you love your neighbor, you will fulfill the requirements of God's law. So we're to owe nothing to anyone expect to, except to love one another. So a couple of key points, debt's the number one enemy to you having a financially healthy, healthy life. Um, it is the most mass marketed uh, ploy uh, out there in America today. In fact, most of, we're getting into Christmas, so this is perfect timing, because there are companies that make more money on the interest than they do on the product uh, that they actually sell. That's why we just bought a piece of furniture recently, we were in a store and we saw easy financing available easy financing available everywhere, trying to entice us to, to get into easy financing. But we know that's a ploy of the enemy and that's gonna be debt. In fact, when we go into debt, we are a slave to the lender. We are a slave to the lender. So you, you ever hear this? I owe, I owe, so off to work I go. Well, we don't wanna be in that position. Proverbs 22, seven says this, just as the rich rule over the poor, so the borrower is the servant to the lender. We don't wanna be a servant. We wanna be the head, we, wanna be, we don't wanna be the tail. Uh, uh, the, the other point in the area of debt is this, debt limits our ability to plant and invest the seed that God has given us, um, and that's a big deal because God's given each one of us a measure of blessing and only the seed that we sow into the kingdom of God or into investments will ever produce a harvest. So when we go into debt, we're actually assigning our future seed to debt instead of a harvest. That's not a good thing. And every dollar that is dedicated to debt and obligated to debt is a dollar that cannot be invested in the kingdom of heaven. And, and let me just prepare you. This is gonna be a fight. This is gonna be a fight, but it's time for us to rise up during this, this time and, and go out and do what we need to do. If we need to have a garage sale, if we need to make more money and get a part-time job, if we wanna sell some stuff that we don't need, maybe we should go 100% cash like Donna and I did years ago, where we just said we can't even have these credit cards around us anymore. Or maybe we go on a spending fast. Maybe we, we exercise self-control in some of the things that we think are so important, but really aren't that important. Those are some of the things that Donna and I had to do to get control of this area. The, the second thing uh, to detox in the area of our finances is we need to budget. We, a budget is a major key to financial success. And, and budgeting is just simply counting the cost before the month begins. 
In Luke, Luke 14, 28, it says, but don't begin until you count the cost. For who would begin construction of a building without first calculating the cost to see if there's enough room to finish it? So the goal of a budget is to take the money that's coming in and assign it a place to go, and then we subtract what goes out, and the, the answer, or at the end of the month, we should be at zero. So we should be assigning uh, every dollar a place to go. And we can't be good stewards if we don't know what's coming in and going out. We need to balance our accounts. In fact, again, in Proverbs, Proverbs 27, 23 says, be diligent to know the state of your flocks and look well to your herds. Very, very important. The book of Proverbs is the book of wisdom. And there's 31 chapters and we should be reading a chapter a day, you know, and that will allow us to lead the life that God wants us to lead. And last thing is a good budget will lead to us, lead us to prosperity. That's right. There are no financial uh, shortcuts to financial success and good stewardship. Proverbs 21, five says it this way, good planning and hard work leads to prosperity, but hasty shortcuts leads to poverty. So what is prosperity? It's abundance, it's profit, it's gain. That's the definition. So I don't know, you know, we have a prospering at the way class. I don't think we have a, a lack, a loss, and a lease class. We have a abundance, profit, gain, uh, prosperity class, prospering class, because we want to know how to prosper God's way, not just financially, but in all areas. And when we do a budget and when we find areas that we free up, that's like a raise for our family. How many of you would be excited about coming home tomorrow with a $1 an hour raise? That would be exciting to share with your family. I got a dollar an hour raise. Well, that's $40, $40 a week, 160 a month. Do you know that just by looking at our budget and, and evaluating where we're spending our money, we could probably free that up in our budget. And that's the same thing as a raise. So uh, the third thing that we need to do when we wanna detox ourselves and we wanna be a financially healthy steward is to give. It's to be generous. See, generous, the definition of generous is one who is always ready to liberally give. I love that, always ready to liberally give. So our giving must be intentional or it won't happen. So one of the things that we gotta do is we have to make a decision. We have to decide. The IDE in decide means to put to death. So genocide, suicide, homicide, there's a lot of words that end like that, but to decide is to put to death failure. It's to put to death other options. It's a real, real decision. So we have to understand this is an act of worship. And what we need to do is we can set that up on the Way app, recurring giving like my wife and I do. It just makes it super simple, but it should be on autopilot like everything else is. And I remember Pastor Marco's mom always saying that when we walk into the house of the Lord, when we walk into the king's house, we should bring a gift. So 2 Corinthians 9, 7, and 8 says this, you must decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or response in response to pressure, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully, and God will generously provide all you need. Then you'll have everything, you'll always have everything, I love that, always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. Amen. See, God's promise is this, after we give generously to God, He provides everything we need but he also allows us to continue to be a blessing. And I really believe if, if God can get it through you, he can definitely get it to you, okay? And so another thing is that we should practice percentage giving. We should be, you know, it's so awesome that God would take the time to, be, to, to give us a definition of what we should be doing. A tithe is called, it's a tenth, a 10%. What's it a 10% of? It's 10% of our income our increase, our inheritance. We should be giving that to the church or through the church, I should say, because we really don't give to a church, we give through a church. And, and the Way World Outreach has some of the most amazing ministries in the country, and we are so blessed to be able to give here. Um, and so uh, God promises uh, also to pour out a blessing on us. It's one of the, the few things where God says, test me. Test me in this. And Malachi 3.10 says, I'm the Lord, all-powerful, 
and I challenge you to put me to the test, bring the entire 10% into the storehouse so there will be food in my house. Then I will open the windows of heaven and flood you with blessing after blessing. And what is blessing? It's peace, joy, wisdom, happiness, etc. And we can all use more of that. And the last thing is save. Save. It's, it's foolish to spend all we get. Proverbs 21.20 says it this way, The wise have wealth and luxury, but fools spend whatever they get. We don't want to be foolish. So why is it important to save? Because we're going to have peace of mind when the unexpected expenses come up. We're not going to uh, be stressed out because we've got an emergency fund. We can give when God calls us to give and something is nudging at our heart or the Holy Spirit leads for us to, to give. And we'll also develop the discipline of saving, which will build wealth and make us financially strong. See, wealth is built over time in increments with a consistent commitment to set something aside for savings. Proverbs 13, 11 says it this way, wealth gained hastily will dwindle, but whoever gathers little by little will increase it. So, so let's detox our finances. Let's live God's principles with our money. And we have the most amazing growth track here at the church, starting at the way, prospering at the way, and then um, freedom at the way and leading at the way. And so we have the systems in place. If we just plug in and do the work, we're gonna get the results that we're supposed to get. So I just wanna close in a prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just pray that you would bless everyone to, that hears this today. Lord, open up their hearts, rekindle the dreams and the desires you have in their home, Help them in the areas of finances. I pour. I ask for abundant blessings to be poured out on those that actually follow your principles, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you for telling us what to do and showing us the way. We will do it. We will be obedient. We love you, Lord, and we'll give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. God bless you. Have a great day.